What's up everybody? Welcome back my fishing addicts to another episode of Coast to Coast Fishing. And guess what day it is? Tackle Box Tuesday. That's right, it's Tackle Box Tuesday. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start a little theme where we go ahead and we like to be uh, not bougie fishermen. All right, cause let's face it, leaders cost money, line costs money, hooks, weights, sinkers, bobbers, beads, reels, uh, poles, everything that you, you buy or everything you use, you gotta buy. So what we're trying to do is you could be a frugal fisherman. All right, so we're going to go ahead and teach you how to make or do it yourself with some typical fishing gear that you're going to use often. Uh, this episode, we're going to be um, doing surf rigs or surf leaders or custom leaders, as some people call them. And we're also going to be learning how to do your own Carolina rig. All right. So the first things first. Uh, before we get going into the building part, portion of this. Uh, what we're gonna do is just keep in mind the size and the strength of the equipment that we're gonna use could be different from the equipment that you're going to use wherever you're at. Because let's face it, uh, it's all gonna change depending on the target species you're going for, the type of waters, the type of equipment you have even available at a store near you. So the Let's get to the other materials. All right, so the first thing we're gonna use is our leader line. So we got 130 pound uh, test fluorocarbon line. You can get this at uh, catchalltackle.com and probably some other fishing stores um, that, are, that are exclusively fishing. Because let's face it, your typical Walmart Academy doesn't normally sell anything more than 50 or 60. Uh, the next thing we got are beads. As you can see, we got this set of beads. It has a whole bunch of different colors, sort of. And you can get that at Walmart for what, like five bucks? Yeah. Like that. No, it was actually 15. So 15? Okay. Well. It came in a um, pack thing. Okay. So yeah, you got $15. You got 21 100 beads, so I think that should be good for a while. The next thing you're gonna need is, pardon us, uh, we had an eruption in the other bag, so we had to make do with this, is you're gonna need your crimps. Next, you're going to need your snap swivel, the other snap swivel. So you got your snap swivel, and it's important you know the difference, and your barrel swivel. So this one's gonna go to the top. This is gonna be your line to leader swivel. And this one's gonna be your line to weight swivel. Next thing is hooks. As you can see right here, we are going to be using a size 15-0 circle hook. And I know, it's big gear, right? Well, check out the Instagram or the Facebook. You'll know that we catch big fish and of course everything's bigger here in texas all right so first thing we want to do is figure out how long we want our leader to be so and i'll show you it's so easy even a caveman can do it what no just go ahead so i'm gonna undo this for him now him and i we like to Oh yeah, and you're gonna need crimpers, don't forget those. Can't crimp without crimpers. Here you go, sir. Now, what I like to do
is make our leaders about a little about three feet or so. That way from the line to leader swivel to the weight, it gives the bait some freedom of movement. So that way it can actually go in the current and do a little bit of a natural presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and cut our line three feet ish about here. Go ahead and cut. Now, go ahead and take the line. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start at the top. So first we get our crimp, slide it on to the leader line like so, so they can see it, slide it on. Now, the next step is you take your barrel swivel like so, slide it on. Now, you see how he's doing that? You take your line, loop it over, and slide it back into the crimp so it makes a loop. Go ahead. Now, you see how he has all this excess right here? You don't need to do that. All you need to do is make it even out because, let's face it, we're learning how to do this ourselves so we can save money, not waste money online. Now, he's going to go ahead and... and Crimp the crimp. With these crimps, what you're gonna wanna do is, especially the top and the bottom where the swivel, uh, the barrel swivel and the hook, you're gonna wanna make sure those are crimped down real hard because if those come undone, you're losing your fish. Okay, so at minimum, try and crimp it down about five times. Him and I like to make a little design so it's wavy. It's completely up to you. All right. So the next step is we take our first set of beads. So hey. oh, you got some beads? Mm -hmm. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. You call me a bad boy. <laughs> right. All right. So with the beads. A minimum you want to have three on each side because what that's going to do is when it's sliding around go ahead and slide on however many beads you want just like so as he's sliding on his first set of beads i'm going to tell you why at least three because as this is sliding you're going to have this in between your first and second set which is going to hold your weight okay so your weight is going to be sliding back and forth and back and forth so it's going to be sliding into the crimps on either side now over time you don't want that because this will slide over the crimp and that does you absolutely no good if your spider weight or your egg weight depending on the size is right on top of the hook and bearing your bait unless you're trying to catch some crabs and not the kind you get at vietnam now you're too young for that you'll find out in about two years about so he's got his first set of beads next is the snap swivel for the weight or class swivel. Now once again, he's going to take another set of beads, like so, and put them on the opposite side of the class swivel. And there's a reason why we use these bigger beads. These, like I said, you can find in the craft section of Walmart. They have, uh, if you look at compared to the ones he's using right now, he just likes them for that decoration. These have, though it's gonna be hard to see, but have a larger hole so to slide on. We typically use them for this larger line, so it's not so tedious to get on. Now, he's got his next set of beads on there, all nice and pretty. Next step is you're going to take another crimp, slide it on, like so. Now, we like to put this on about around a foot, okay? This way what it does is now we'll show you now he keeps this crimp down here you only need to do like two or three times just because it's just going to be make stop the weight from sliding all the way down to the hook this gives your weight the ability to slide back and forth and once it's sitting here your weight's in the dirt your hook is over here it gives that uh fish about a foot after it bites down on the bait and the hook 
gives you gives it a minute to set the hook. So when he goes, hold it, hold it, no, mm -hmm. not the line. So when the fish goes, it gives him a foot to go ahead and take off so that way he can set the hook himself. All right. I'm gonna take that at about a foot. And that can also vary with however many beads you have, or you can always adjust the uh, crimp to be a little bit longer or shorter depending on your own personal preference. So he's got one, working on a second one. Third. Third, third crimp, third crimp. Three hours later. Six hours later. Now, here's your last step. You take one more crimp, slide it on the end. Take this bad boy, slide it over. Repeat the first two steps you did, which was the same as the barrel swivel in the first crimp. You'll feed the line through the crimp, through the, through the eyelet of the hook, back around, and into the crimp, okay? So you all see how that is right there? Now, you wanna leave, I know it's a little bit hard to see because it's clear, but you wanna leave a little bit of room here. Uh, so you can take this excess tag line. Remember, we're not trying to waste stuff. Push it down, got a, bit, a little bit bigger loop. Tighten it to about here. So you got just enough room, okay? And then He's going to go ahead and crimp it. Reason we have to keep that little loop right there is when you're using your spider weights, because let's face it, we're surf fishing. Um, we're pier fishing, wherever there's, you know, a good strong current. Jetty fishing. Jetty fishing. Um, so what that does is when you have your spider weight, the prongs are facing up. So what you do is now that he, when he's done crimping, I'll show you. One more. One more. Oh, you're up. Okay. okay. So what happens is you have your line to swivel. All right. Now it's going to be hanging like this. And you got your bait down here. You're not trying to wing three feet of line because you're not going to get a good cast like that. So the reason we have this loop here is when you have your spider weight, the prongs that are facing up, what you do is, let's actually use this as a good example. So here's a clothespin. Pretend this is part of the spider weight. So the prong is facing up. Now you take the little loop and then you let it hang. So now your weight and your bait are hanging the exact same length. That way you're not going to get that uh, twirl effect. And then lines all hung up. Your bait goes flying off. You get it all twisted up. It's just not a good day for anybody. So when it impacts the water, the fish floats up and it comes off the prong. So in a perfect world, but of course when I'm recording, it's not going to do it. So as it lands, this floats off. Weight sinks, brings it down, boom, here it is. Oop, there it is. So, I'd like to thank Junior and his awesome haircut. Thank you very much, sir. For making a leader, custom leader. Now, one of these uh, will cost you like six, seven dollars in, uh -huh. in at least in the store, especially you know with the uh, heavier weights and or heavier. Um, pound test, bigger hooks. The more you use, the more uh, more money it's gonna cost. So, but this shows how easy it is to actually make your own stuff, okay? All you gotta do, go to your local uh, fishing out, fishing store, like the stuff that's near the bait, not the bait shop, but you know, like a good marina store, and they'll have big packs. There's a hundred hooks in here. And we're about a little more than halfway down this box. So we weighed about 50 liters ourselves. Mostly There's me. whatever. Mm -hmm. So there is, this is about 400 yards. 
So you got plenty here. And then the other bag of crimps was about the same size as this. And we did run out of uh, barrel swivels because it only came as 50 as a pack. And snap swivels. And well, we have some more snap swivels somewhere, but somebody lost them. I can't, you know, uh, find uh, them. I used them all. All right, so is there a mute button? Anyway, uh, so that's basically it. Really easy. So easy a caveman can do it. And uh, <clears throat> just kidding. He's a good kid. Now, mm -hmm. so easy that your kids can do it. So what's really cool is once you put them in front of the TV, just have them start crimping away, showing them what to do, getting the line set up, and then you come in and fix it. And the last step, but certainly not least, is you take it, make a nice little loop out of it, take your uh, handy dandy little sandwich baggie, the reason we use sandwich baggies, and not these twist ties like you can get. Because one, you gotta use two of these. One to the hook and line side, and then the other to the other, so that way it's not going everywhere. But, just seal it, toss it, forget it. Toss it. Whatever. Yeah, see, so I can That's just go precious. ahead, shake it up. Doesn't matter what it is. How dare you. It's not tangled. These, you don't want to buy sandwich bags, they can get tangled up in other ones. But, you just put a whole bunch of these together. You're good to go. All right. Now that we are done with numero one, we're going to go ahead and move into how to do your own California rig. Just kidding. Carolina rig. He's got me saying California. He's a California rig. <laughs> An eternity later. All right, fishing addicts. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and make our own Carolina rig. First, let me go ahead and show you what we're gonna be using, which is, well, this is what I would use if I wasn't doing this for demonstration purposes. You got 20 pound test, mono. You have your barrel swivel. You have your class swivel. You're gonna need oops, two beads and three crimps. All right, and don't forget your egg weights. So this right here is, as you know, a Carolina rig. You got your barrel swivel on the top to your line, bead, egg weight, bead, crimp, Crimp, and this is a clasp right here. This is, like I said, this is one I bought, not one that I made. Um, the reason why I make them is I use a clasp swivel. That way, it gives the bait a more lifelike presentation. And with this, it kind of it'll bunch up like so, or you know, it can just like all twist around and then get stuck like that. Uh, the reason. I got this was for one I didn't have any with me so I needed to buy one and for two I was looking for uh, sheep's head so you guys know that they're uh, they have a pretty strong bite human like teeth so they can go ahead and bite your line it's also good for other predatory fish that have real sharp teeth so we'll go through the basic mechanics of this however Due to me not having small crimps, we won't be using this. I actually prefer using this anyway. So what we'll do, take our first things first. Step one, you always give yourself some extra line. That way you have something to play with. And a good thing about this too is it's clear and it's really strong, so if you get your hook broken off, the class swivel breaks off, you still got your, you're still not losing out on your weight in the rest of your line. And you can always hook another leader to it and uh, keep going from there. So, first things first, demonstrator. We will go ahead and just like 
in the previous section, you grab your first crimp, you slide it on. You take your barrel swivel, slide it on. Now, show, go ahead and show so they can see. There you go. All right, so you do that, you get your little loop, go ahead and tighten it up so we're not wasting any line because line costs money. Let's go, on, go ahead and crimp it down. So he's going to go ahead and crimp it down. That's fine just for now. And then he would normally go ahead and cut this little tag in just to prevent anything else. Then take our bead, go ahead and put that on. Go ahead and put the bead on. And then take our weight. This is a little one ouncer. And we take our next bead. And like I said before, the reason why we put the beads on is to make sure the weight is not knocking into our next step or the top part is the crimp. So I'll go ahead and put a crimp on there. And as you can see with the purchased one, they have the crimp to stop it just like, so basically the Carolina is almost like a mini surf rate. So he can go ahead and hold that off. Thank you. Grab this. And like I said before, you only really need to crimp it like once or twice. Not that serious. It's just holding your weight on. And then last but not least, what you can do is since you got this here, get your weight, you can either clamp a hook on like so, or what like what I prefer to do is I'll take this right here and you got your one more. Oop, that one's used. like so and then your class level just the same as we did before and then you would slide it through and crimp it however there's an alternate way to make this which is shorter and can give you a, a different part for your leader so it'll give you actually a little more room to play with so what I would do is I'd make it a little bit shorter Because let's face it, fish don't always want to bite the hook with a class swivel. So what we'll do is we'll actually make a shorter one. Take this through like so. Put that through. Run it through to there. Tighten it down. Pull it nice and close so it can move around a bit. Give it a good couple crimps because you're not going to be using, you're not going to be catching, or you're not going to be targeting bigger species fish with this. But now you have, well I have, a 130 pound test Carolina rig. Okay? So. Now what you can do from here, is take this, you can get some fluoro or a regular mono, and now tie it to the clasp, and there you go, you can make your, in retrospect, uh, another leader, so you can make it as long as you want, so you're not just limited to the prepackaged distance. So. You'll be able to 
go ahead and figure out what you want to do and go from there. That being said, um, you can use this line to go ahead and land all sorts of fish. Uh, we even, even landed big sharks on the other previous one. So basically, we're done for the day. And I thank you all for tuning in. In the meantime, go ahead, keep those lines tight, those rods bent. Peace. We out.